Hello everyone and welcome to our Owl Planter tutorial. Make sure you have your clay and a piece of paper to work on, water and a towel, and this time I'm using a pencil and a butter knife. Common household objects everybody can get a hold of. That's what's awesome about clay. Let's go. Alright, first I'm going to start by taking about a quarter chunk away from my clay ball. Set it to the side. We're saving it for later for details. Now I'm going to make my bigger hunk into a nice little sphere to work with, just a nice ball of clay. I drag my fingers over the cracks on the clay to smooth them out. I use my palms to gently tap it into a ball. And once I've got that, we're going to start the pinch pot by inserting your thumb in the middle and doing a pinching motion like a crab. Twisting the ball of clay as we pinch, we pinch the sides and then you'll start to see this bowl forming. You can even see it in my hands now. I hold it in the palm of my hand to make sure that I don't push my fingers all the way through the clay. I don't want a big hole in the bottom. But once I've got about a bowl I'm happy with, I flatten the bottom on the table and start pinching the pot directly on the table. This makes sure that my pot isn't going to flop over and I've got a flat surface for it to sit on. And I just kind of press gently down on the bottom as well so that my clay is pressed flat. There's enough room to add some soil and a little plant later. Fabulous. Now I'm just going to smooth out the cracks on the rim of my clay. I don't want for that to get super weak and I certainly don't want for a crack to go all the way down the sides. So take a second if you see it starting to get crickly cracky. Now we're going to blend the sides. Check it out you guys, if you blend the sides up in this upward motion, then your pot won't grow wider, it'll only grow a little taller. My pot was a little lopsided, so when I get over to the shorter side, I'm actually gonna push a little harder. See that pressure I'm adding? Because I'm pushing it up towards the top so that this side grows just a little bit taller and my pot won't be quite so uneven. That side of my wall was a little thick as well so I had room to work with. You don't want for your clay to be super thin and also my perfectionists out there, you don't want to sit there and stress about how perfect your pot is. It is still a pinch pot. You're going to see the imprints of where your fingers went. It's why it's one of my favorite methods um, because then you don't have to stress about perfection, you just have to make it look cute, a little homemade object. Again, I'm running my finger over the rim. I'm smoothing out the crickly cracks so it doesn't get super weak. Okay, we don't want for those cracks to split all the way down the side of our pot. That wouldn't be very helpful. And then once I've got all the sides about the same height, about the same height, this is the point when you will want to flip it over Get, and just barely add a little pressure to flatten the rim a little bit. Check it out. See, it looks a little funky because some of my sides are a little thicker, but I'm not stressed about that. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't have like these crazy high tops and then these low lows. I want for my top rim to be slightly even whenever I look at it straight on. Feel free to take the time to smooth out any additional little lumps and bumps or cracks you see on the side. Taking an additional minute to smooth out your clay is what makes a good project great. It's the boring bits, but it is the part that all of a sudden makes your project look 5,000 times better. Okay, let's move on. We're going to hit it with the details. The first thing and the most important detail in my opinion we're going to make is the eyes for the owl. First what I do for the eyes is I roll out two small balls of clay. It's easy to roll out both first so you can compare sizes, about the same size, and then you flatten them. Flatten them into little pancakes, then smooth out the edges. Sometimes when you flatten them, the edges can get a little crickly cracked. If you need a little touch of water to do this, you certainly can use it. My clay was still pretty soft so I didn't need it. Set them to the side. And now we're going to make the owl's eyebrow. This is what makes the eyes look super owl-like, is this little brow. 
make a small coil, check it out. I made it a little skinny on both the ends and kind of fat in the middle. And then just bend it into a V right in the middle. And the shape that we kind of want to achieve is, you know, like those flying bird shapes whenever you draw a bird flying far, far away. It's like a curved V. That's what we're trying to attempt. I'm going to use my pencil for my scoring this time. You can use whatever. You can use a, a, a toothpick. If you got a cutting tool from us, fabulous. Last video I used a pen. Whatever. As long as you do the scoring. The scoring is the most important part of every project because if you don't do any scoring, all of the details you add to the face are just going to fall off. It, it won't stick. Even if it stays today, don't let it trick you. It, it, I promise your pieces will fall off if you don't score. I gently laid it on the front, or what I deemed to be the front of my pot, so I could trace where I need to score. Also, if you didn't know, scoring is simply this act of scratching the surface of the clay. I like to think of it as clay Velcro, okay? You have to have both sides of the Velcro in order for it to work. So every time I add a piece, I make sure to score my piece as well as where I'm going to add my piece on my pot. I just use a couple finger dips of water and put it on my scored area and gently push my two pieces together. The scoring will ensure that they stick. You gotta add a little pressure. You can't just set it there. You gotta kinda push it on and then blend. Blending is another great way to make sure that your piece stays. Blending doesn't work on its own, but it certainly does make it stronger. Actually drag the clay. I use my thumb. You can see my eyebrow piece is getting a little bit thinner as I go. That's okay. That is okay. I want to drag the clay so I completely cover that seam and it's blended together. Like you can't even tell where I added the piece anymore. It's just part of the structure. See that? See my seam's kind of gone on the bottom because I blended and I drug that clay from the coil down onto the pot. Fabulous. Now let's kind of try and get in there on the upper eyebrow, blend that. Nicely done, nicely done. You don't want to see the seam anymore of where you added it. It can be a little tough to get in there in that crease, but don't, don't sweat it. You can get there, just persevere. Check it out, y'all. I'm having to get a little handy here. I'm just going to use my old butter knife I brought and gently get it in the crease there to try and get rid of that gap. I don't want to see where I added it. I want it to look seamless. Okay. Just about got it. I see a tiny little hole. Ah, made it. Finally got it so that it's just added on there. You can't even see the seam anymore. Fabulous. Now that I've got the eyebrows on there, I'm ready to add the eyes that I set aside. They're kind of big, but that's okay. That's what makes it look really cute. My one eye was a little bit big, so I just took a small chunk out and re-rolled it, and I flattened it like a pancake again. There we go. Now it's the same size. You can see my edges of the eye kind of cracked a bit. I'm using just a little bit of water to blend those out so I have a smooth edge. I don't want those cracked edges. I just, it's not my thing, you guys. Okay, check that one. Make sure it's nice and smooth. All right, just like everything, you got to score. I always like to score in three directions. That's how I know I scored really well. One, two, three. Make it ugly. This part's going to be covered up anyways. Got to score the piece you're adding as well. The Velcro won't work unless you have both sides to adhere it to. Okay, amazing, amazing. All right, we need just a finger dip of water. I don't need a lot. A lot of water makes the clay soggy, remember. Push it on there and try to give it a gentle twist. I like to twist if I can because whenever you twist the piece of clay, you almost start to feel it resisting you twist and that's a really good sign. That means that it is stuck on there, honey, and you have scored really well. 
So whenever I twist, it's like I can feel it. I feel it resisting. And I'm like, okay, perfect. I feel good about that. Okay. I'm thinking you guys might already know what's next. Another key feature. Let's get go ahead and get the beak going. In order to do the beak, you can't see me. Apologies, I went out of the frame there. But I'm just rolling a small ball of clay, and I flattened it into a pancake. Now I'm going to use my butter knife and cut a small triangle. I'm only going to cut two sides for now. We'll see how that looks, because I think the curved top might really play into the beak look. I just took the very pointy bit off the end because I want a round, cutesy beak. I don't want for it to be a scary, talony looking beak. I just want it to be a cute little owl planter. Alright, let's see what it looks like on the side of my owl. I'm going to kind of hold them up here so that you can see what I've got going on. Whoop, hang on, I'm going to show you in a minute because I felt like it was a little bit too big. Check it out. All right, I shortened it just a little bit. Okay. Yes, honey, that is the size I am looking at. Whenever it was really big before, I should have showed y'all, but it was just, like, giant. It went all the way down to the bottom of the planter, and I don't know, it, it kind of looked off. I'm going for that cutesy little cartoon look with the big old eyes and a little mouth. Got to score every time you're adding a piece, otherwise it won't stick, right? Score the beak as well as on the pot like I just did. One finger dip of water and push it on there. Oh my gosh, it's already coming together. <laughs> I love it so much, you guys. Okay. Okay, the next piece I'm going to make, or pieces, I should say, are the wings on the side. Oh no, new tool alert, but don't worry, I'm trying to roll out some clay and I'm literally just using a glass. A glass I got from my cabinet. Like I said, I'm sorry if that was a surprise to bring another tool, but I'm never going to just all of a sudden be using some crazy clay tool that nobody will have access to. Okay, so... You want to start and get one wing. Get one wing set up until you're happy with it. Okay? And the reason you want to do your first one is because then you can prepare your second wing, roll out that clay with the glass or a cup or whatever you've got going on. I'm not making it super, super skinny. We're just rolling it flat. But then you can use that first wing as a template. Check it out. Now I don't even have to stress about if I've got the exact same shape and size, I know I do to the best of my ability because I just made a template. Okay, smooth out the edges so they don't look all crazy. And now, just like everything, you gotta score. Score that bad boy at least three different directions. I'm really getting in there because since this is a flat piece, I don't want it to dry and try to curl up off of my piece. When clay dries, it likes to try and curl in different directions, so that doesn't exactly work in your favor when you're adding flat pieces like this wing here. So the more scoring you can do, the better. And now we're going to add it to the side of my pot. Oh, saw a little crack. I'm just going to smooth that out. Oh, all right. Yep, that looks about right. So I gently place it on there and lightly trace in there. I'm not cutting into the clay super deep. I'm only giving myself a guideline so I know where to score. Scoring at least three different directions. Really rough it up. Make it look ugly, remember? You're going to cover it up anyway, so who cares what it looks like underneath there? A finger drop of water. Press that wing on there real good. 
try to make the edges flat down against the bowl. And what I mean by that is it, I don't want like that wing to like, I don't want to be able to see under the edges of it. I want it to all be flush with the clay pot. Okay, you'll notice that most of these facial features and pieces I've put on, except for the eyebrow piece, I have not been blending. Blending, it makes the pieces stronger, but for this project, I just didn't want that look. So that's why I've been really making sure to score super well, because without the blending to reassure that it's really attached there super well, I'm only relying on the scoring. Whoa, 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 sorry guys, my video cut out, but I caught it just in time. I didn't get much farther. I had just finished adding my wing. I was getting a little bit worried about the wings not being uh, blended. I don't want to completely get rid of the crease because I want for the wing to look separate, but I am kind of dragging my finger along the inside of the crease so that there is a slight bit of blending so it looks a little bit more attached and I have that extra... Um, that extra strength. Okay, I'm going to ball up the rest of my clay. It's getting a little dried out. I know I tell you guys no water, but towards the end, if you need it, dip those fingers in some water and re-moisturize your clay. We're going to make the feet. It's the last key feature, and they're super cute. I start with two balls of clay, and then check it out. I pinch it, but only half. So only pinch half. Check out this side view. See that? You can still see half of the ball. Pinch it, but only half. Only half. There you go. So I've kind of got like this lump at the end of my pinched pancake. Use your butter knife and make the toes by gently pressing it and rolling it on the smooth edge of the knife. If your butter knife is serrated, don't use that end, use the back end but just gently roll it so that you can make those impressions and make the toes. Score on the flat half on one side. Always got to score, otherwise it ain't going to stick, right? We've, I've been preaching that the whole time. You're probably tired of hearing it. And then these are going to go on the underside of our owl. You'll see here. Okay, you want it just about under each eye towards the middle. Yeah, there you go. Use your eyes as measurements. Score and score. Use a little finger dip of water. Not a lot. I only ever dip my finger once. Push it on there. And blend. I don't want to see where you attached it, at least on the back half. See there, you can't even tell anymore. Little finger dip of water under my scored area. Push the two pieces together. And blend. So you can't tell where you added it. I'm going to take this moment while I'm holding my owl upside down. I've got a little straw on hand here. If you've got a straw, fabulous. You can use a stick, a pencil. Poke a drainage hole. Maybe you don't need it, but I, I, I plant a lot of plants that, plants that need drainage. Okay, see, check it out. Don't his little feet bring it all together. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Okay. So just a little extra detail. You can use your pencil or pen, but I'm going to like lightly draw in some big old pupils in the center of my eyeball. Now this part's up to you. This is, I mean, at a certain point, it is optional. You can add whatever details you want. I always like to draw a few details into it. But if you prefer, you could simply paint the pupils on there. Whenever I draw into the clay, I like to use a pen or like a mechanical pencil that's not have a, that doesn't have any lead pushed out. Basically, I just like a blunt surface, a surface that isn't super, super pointed. Whenever you have a softer, uh, like a ballpoint pen, a softer tip to work with, it just leads to less clay tearing up around the lines you create and making an uneven and kind of uh, scary looking 
line in the clay, it may, leads to a smoother line, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. I like that. You know, I think I'm also going to take a second and add some feather shapes. I'm not going to stress about it too much, but just going to kind of add these nice little scallops. Make it look like some cutesy little feathers. Love that. While you're doing details with your pen or pencil or drawing tool or whatever you're using, guys, also take a minute and flip it over on the bottom and write your name in the bottom so we know who the heck this clay creation belongs to. We get lots of clay creations back at the studio, so if it doesn't have your name on it, it's pretty tough for us to know who, who, who needs to take it home, who we got to call in order to let you know it's ready to paint. So just take a second before you call it quits and write your name on the bottom actually into the clay. And I always suggest a year too because it's like, I mean, I know I personally never remember when the heck I made stuff once two or three years pass. Okay, I am really happy with my little owl planter. I hope you guys love yours. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful that you guys joined me today. I hope to see you next time.